Episode 18. This is Cabby, February 22nd, 2017. What's on my mind today is a little chat about the importance of lesson based skill development training. And this goes through the spectrum of youngsters just starting out to professional ball players and beyond. Um, for me, it's the best, most concentrated way to get positive results in development or in simplified terms, it's the easiest way to get better. It's the fastest way to get better would be. Lesson-based skill development training. Now, obviously, it's only a, a, a piece of the puzzle, okay? It's only one of the things that we have to commit to as a ball player. And the reason I think it's the most important part of getting better or developing as a player is because it's where a player can best get the exposure of a high level learning. It's where they're going to learn the best. It's the control environment where they can learn, apply, experiment, figure out what works best, and then just kind of repeat that constantly, adjust, learn some more, apply, experiment, figure out what works best. And it's a concentrated effort because usually it's an individual lesson or a small group setting, which is cool as well. And you're also getting a high level of rep, of reps, repetition. I can, I can have a 30-minute or an hour-based lesson with an individual revolving around hitting and get a substantial amount of swings in, uh, so much more than they would in their weekend full of games or their week full of games and their at-bats. So hitting, a skill like hitting in baseball revolves so much on feel, timing, rhythm, feel, timing, rhythm, uh, repetitions, that we have to get a certain amount of those reps in. So I'm obviously clearly a big fan of lesson-based skill development training. We've all heard of a pitching lesson or a hitting lesson, fielding lesson, throwing lesson, athletic training sessions. You know, that's just in baseball. And what you're starting to see now is a more concentrated effort or a more specialized form of tutoring as well in education. So in all these walks of life now, as we're young and developing and learning on up through adulthood and beyond too, if you want to get good at something, you're really seeking out someone who's a master in that and can help you on a one-on-one -on -one or really small group basis. I think that's where the most gains are. You're going to gain. You're at an advantage when you're in that setting. Now, I talk a lot to parents and kids, coaches, about the importance of finding that individual in your life, in your area, wherever you live, that can be 
that person for you that you can learn in that lesson-based environment, that skill development, lesson-based environment. Now that person's hard to find. It's just like any other business. There's really good product out there and there's really bad product out there. And there's more bad than good. Um, There's not a ton of people around that not only have some sort of level of playing experience, but also a professional level teaching experience of the game, of the skill development. So those people aren't everywhere. And even the ones that are, very few choose to start their own business and make it their life and dedicate all all, or a lot of their time to their craft. And then therefore they're getting really good at what they do too. So seeking that person out is tough. You know, uh, there might be a lot of people giving lessons in your area. You know, ask around. Do a little taste test. Go and uh, do several lessons with several people. Figure out who you like best. Who communicates with you and your kid you as a parent or you as an older player as well because high school college young pros you know should be putting themselves out there to to seek out someone who's a master at teaching and training mentorship you want to have that person in your phone that you can text or call anytime about what you're working on what your issues are, your problems. You know, dealing with the bad stuff or the failures is always going to be the most important, one of the most important aspects is how you ad- adjust and deal with failure. You know, to, so to, ha- to have that lifeline of somebody that can really help you out with that is important. Now, to, to, to find that person is, is tough, like I just said. You got to ask around. You got to do your homework. You got to, you know, find reviews of people here. Not that hearsay is everything, but usually someone's reputation, um, if you ask enough people, kind of comes to fruition. And and then go in there, contact that person, and get a lesson, and see and see and see what you think. If you got to get a couple different perspectives or points of views from a couple different other people, then do that. But once you find that person that clicks, that's good, and you're getting results, and there's a high level of communication, and you're happy with it, stick with it. That's an important piece of the puzzle. Now, what are we looking for in a really good teacher, trainer, mentor, someone who's giving lesson-based skill development, someone who's doing that for a profession? What are we looking for in that person? Obviously, a high, quali- uh, a high level of knowledge. They're able to break things down and simplify things. Because we're dealing with a very complicated sport, very technical sport, can be a very mechanical function to do a lot of the things in baseball. And sometimes we're dealing with really young kids, so to be able to simplify and break things down. A high level of communication. So th- this person should be available to you, text message, phone calls, emails. They shouldn't be bothered by that. They, they, you, they work for you as a player or a parent. This person works for you. By going in and hiring that person and committing to that person and seeing that person, they work for you. So I work, in my case, I work for, for a lot of different parents and kids. I work for them. 
that's the way that relationship works. So high level of communication, a high level of follow up. If a kid's going to, if you're going to work or train or as a parent, you're going to bring your kid into work with somebody, say for a half hour or one hour per week on a certain day. So essentially you're seeing the person once a week. There should be follow up. And it's a two way street. As parents or kids, you should be able to send that person video and get some feedback. And as an instructor, teacher, trainer, you should, you should be able to occasionally send notes, bullet points, reminders to your student and to the parents. Lately, what I've been doing that I like a lot, uh, maybe for about the last year or so, is throughout my lesson with an individual, which is always different, the, the topics are always different, from, each, from individual to individual based on their skill set, age, where they're at in their career. And throughout the lesson, I'll make notes on myself, bullet points of, of what we're talking about and what we're trying to accomplish. And then I'll, I'll text that to the player and the parent and or the parent. And I'll promote them to make some sort of notebook, to print those notes out and to make some sort of notebook. So they have reference as to the lasting effect of what they're learning in the facility, you know, for their once a week or twice a week or three times a week or whatever the case is. So that's what you're looking for in this instructor, teacher, trainer, communication, follow up. Um, their intentions. You, 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 you want to sense that the instructor, teacher, trainer is invested in the player. What I mean by that is it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect me if one of my students is struggling mightily, just they're not performing, and, and they've worked with me for three months or six months or a year. That's, I'm not going to stand for that. That will bother me, and I will adjust. If something like this comes up, I will adjust. We will mix up the game plan, the approach, how we're attacking certain things, and we will constantly t tweak and, and adjust and, and add and subtract and experiment in other ways until we get a better product and better production and more positive development. So you're looking for that in the instructor as well, is this sense, this urge that we're always trying to get better. And if there's bad results, we're going to do something about it. Many, many, many people will just come and just do the same lesson type stuff and just regurgitate the same type of stuff and, and week after week, month after month, year after year, and then the player is flatlining or the, not, not improving. And a lot of times, no one's aware of it because there's no communication, no follow-up. And there's, and there's not the right intention in the, with the instructor to, to do something about it, to shake it up. So as players and parents, that's the person you're looking for. You know, there has to be a high level of care factor in the instructor. It's a business. Someone's offering a professional service, just like in any other walk of life. You're expecting to get something out of it. There has to be value. So, you know, those are the things we're looking at when we seek that person out. So going back to the main point, the importance of lesson-based skill development in the game of baseball. Um, so what are some other you know, pieces of the puzzle, aside from lesson-based training, you know, obviously playing games, which is, I always tell people that that's something I can't offer a player. Um, I, 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 t I fully understand it's an, a hugely important part of development as well. You have to play. You have to experience games. You have to transfer your training into competition. And I get it. 
But what you see now more than ever, because of the, the, the impact of club baseball, travel baseball, whatever you want to call it, uh, the showcase circuit, Little League, you know, all these youth level programs from, say, six years old to 14 or entrance into high school. So let's just say six to 14 is early and earlier now kids are being thrown in, signed up for just organizational team activity. And most of the time they're getting coaches who don't have the ability to enhance players' skill development. And then there's the thought that, you know, parents are buying into it that that's the key to getting better is signing your kid up for Little League or club baseball. And that is just not true. And basically what you're just doing is you're just letting them play. And even if you're fortunate enough to have a practice or two throughout the week, again, who's putting together the practice plan? Where's that coming from? How many reps are we getting? Is it being specifically tailored to the individual? Uh, You know, most of the time it's not. What you can really bring out in that individual skill-based training is you can tailor the lesson to that individual. And that's what a good teacher, trainer, instructor does is, in my opinion, it's what I try to do, is to bring out the best in that particular individual. So we have different shapes, sizes of individual players different skill levels, different natural abilities, different coordination, you know, different levels of all this stuff. And you're trying to bring the best out of that. And how you do that is different for each individual. Physically, mentally, auditory, visionary, how someone perceives, how someone learns. All these things are different, right? So what the, that the team aspect does is it kind of cookie cuts the plan for, for the masses. And unless you're extremely talented and, and have a lot of natural ability, you're not going to benefit from that very much, okay? So in a perfect world, you seek out that instructor that can enhance your skill level, and then you balance that with being on, hopefully, uh, a, a team that provides an outlet to play games under some sort of fair level of supervision, and, and, and it allows you the ability to get that experience that you need, that in-game experience. And, you, and the best results I have with individuals is always inquiring about my students' performance in game situations. I have to get that feedback. I have to get that feedback, whether it's video or a little blurb about you know, each at bat or each game. I have to have that feedback so I can go back into that lesson and and talk about what went on in game situations. And that's the balance, that's the counterbalance of lesson-based training and then game performance result stuff. There has to be that communication, there has to be that back and forth. So I, you know, and, and me just talking about this, like some people might say, like, of course, he's trying to pump up, you know, lesson based training because that's what he does. And he's trying to drum up business. I don't that's not why I'm talking into my phone right now. Go see somebody else. You know, you'll learn one way or the other. You'll find somebody's good for you or you won't. And if you're in my area, maybe you'll find me. But, you know, I'm talking about all the people that might hear this from anywhere where you're at, wherever you're at in the country or the world or whatever, is that person is out there that's going to enhance and benefit your career more than any other situation. That person's out there. You have to seek it. You have to find it. 
I have some really good examples of people that I'm working with currently that this is a top priority in this player's life right now. And what's wrong with that? Because if you want to be good at this, you should make it a priority. Yes, you have to behave well. You have to get good grades. But what else is there to do for someone, a young baseball player, who, who talks a good game and wants to be good and says he wants to be good and tells everybody he wants to be good, what is there left to do but to actually put in the work and get the training and get the information, knowledge and information that you need from somebody, that instructor, that teacher, that trainer, that mentor? So it is so beneficial. Is it expensive? Yes, it can be. As most professional services rendered are. But when we look about some of the unnecessary stuff that we spend money on as youth baseball players, pro players, college players, high school players, parents, the travel, the silly uniforms, the equipment, everything now is just better, more, more, more marketed. Everything is just constructed to extract money. So the priority, because we only have so many resources, everybody's different, but that priority should be in that knowledge and information in that lesson-based skill development program that you can attach yourself to the sooner the better. And obviously this talks more towards younger athletes, but even the pro stuff now, you know, pro guys getting in the draft, getting to get, you know, starting to make a living, make mo money's coming in. Now you're playing for a living, reinvest that money into yourself, into your body, into your brain, you know, expose yourself to people that are going to help you and enhance the player that you are, that are going to get you better. And it's going to prolong your career. I'm talking, I'm not, not, I'm not t just talking skill development now. I'm talking nutrition, you know, health, flexibility, you know, the psychology of it. You know, so you, you I mean, now more than ever, we live, that, we live in a world of specialization. And you, you need to, you, you know, you, your specialization is your career you as, an, as a baseball player. And there's a lot of um, parts to that. So, you know, only the best are continuing their path of learning. Only the best are the ones saying that I haven't learned it all yet. And I've, I'm learning every day. I'm making adjustments every day. I'm putting myself out there and getting exposed to new, cool stuff, innovative thinking, open-mindedness, creativity. Uh, I'm experimenting with some things that's going to help my body, my flexibility, my speed, my strength and conditioning, how that's going to apply to my skills, and now tying everything together. That's the common thing I see a lot of pro athletes now is they don't, they don't tie it in together. They're workout warriors in the gym, but they're not applying it or tying it to, to the functionality of their skill on the field, Right? Their nutrition levels are through the roof. And it's having great impact on their body. But they're leaving out some key parts of skill development and skill training. The actual process of fielding a ground ball or throwing to a base or running the bases or hitting or pitching. The actual process or art for you pitchers that are, you know, the art of pitching is getting guys out. It's not crow hopping nine times and throwing the ball as hard as you can into a net five feet off target. You know, so tying it all together is, is what you see now. There's so much great stuff out there, but tying it all together is, is what's kind of lacking, in my opinion, for the professional ball player. And even for you youngsters listening, I mean, it's going to get to that point where, you know, you, 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 you're having to tie everything together now. And it takes a lot of 
time and effort to do that and commitment and the hours in the gym, in the cage, on the field, you know, so kids that are playing at a high level in college or pro right now, it, newsflash, this is your, this is your job. This is what you're, uh, you're at a point in life where this is your top priority. And if it's not, you won't be playing long. If you don't take it that serious, you won't be playing long. And you youngsters that want to be good and you parents that have these youngsters that they have a high level of interest, do something about it before it's too late because the time will come and go where they have an opportunity to develop and play. So wide range of kind of people I'm talking about right now from the, the six-year-old just starting out to the, the major leaguer, you know, If you want to be serious and you want to be good about it and you want to be a good ball player, then you've got to take extra steps. You know, and and what you see now overwhelmingly again is this whole culture where you know parents and kids just think cuz they're playing on a team or they're playing 7, 8, 9 months out of the year in these tournaments every weekend and these games and unsupervised practice by good uh, coaches, you know, and then more games under bad supervision and then more practices with no practice plan, not tailored to the individual. And then you get into this where you're just a product of your environment, which is mediocre players with bad coaching and hours and hours of wasted time spent. So, and then that's how kids flatline or get out of the game, fail their way out of the game or never make the next level. But the ones understanding that, hey, I gotta be on a team, I gotta play, but I'm also working with high level instructors, teachers, trainers, mentors, in all different categories of where I want my weaknesses to become uh, on par with my strengths. And, uh, and that's the never ending battle. You know, someone who's gonna talk to me real and lay it out to me, give me fair evaluations, push me, prod me, monitor me, care about me, you know, you know, that, that's the aid that many need in their baseball careers that they never seek out. And the attitude of you're too good to take a lesson or seek out somebody is, is ridiculous. You will be exposed in no time if you think you're too good to listen to somebody who might be highly recommended or doing really good things, that attitude is not good. And that starts at a young, young age because when the 12-year-old Babe Ruth of Little League, who's a foot taller than everybody, crushes balls, him and his parents think, well, why would I ever go get a hitting lesson? And, and that's where it starts. I'm already doing good. I don't need to learn. No, 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 no. Come see me. We'll talk. I'll give you a bunch of free lessons just to hear me talk because I'm going to push and I'm, I'm not going to teach that kid like a 12-year-old. We're going to be advanced and in, in, in breaking down barriers of what's to come at 14 years old into high school and, and beyond. So now you have someone pushing you above where your level is right now to better expose your weaknesses that are there. They're just not being exposed yet as a youngster who's bigger, stronger, faster than everybody else, right? So everybody has those underlying weaknesses that are just waiting to be exposed. If, if an instructor, teacher, trainer, mentor never exposes the, those weaknesses or you don't allow those weaknesses to be exposed, you're setting yourself up for a failure, a big failure, a free fall, like being cut or released from a team, you're setting yourself up for a free fall and you're setting yourself up for the end of your baseball career. And when you look back, you'll say, geez, I should have spent more time on that because I wasn't good at that. And no one ever told me that. Well, you didn't seek out someone to do that for you. So seeking out lesson-based skill development training, very important. Pitching lessons, hitting lessons, fielding lessons, throwing, whatever, speed training, athletic training, strength and conditioning, flexibility, 
yoga stuff. It's, you know, the list is long, but that's what's being tapped into now recent, in recent years is all these things that can benef benefit a baseball player's career. And those that choose not to do that, you're, you're being passed up. You're coasting on uh, maybe some natural ability, and it's just a matter of time before everybody pass you, pass you up. We're approaching a time where it's harder than ever to make it and, 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 and become great because um, there's, there's enough people taking the right actions to do it and sacrificing and committing. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. There's enough people taking advantage of it that is driving the level of competition to higher levels than ever before. And you want to be on that level. All right. I got to go. Thanks for listening. Comment. Like a lot of the reason um, I think of these topics and stuff is just through conversation with you know, people in my baseball world or parents, coaches, uh, players that I, I talk and run into. I think of an idea or some, somebody brings it up and I say, yeah. Or if someone uh, texts me or calls me or emails me and wants me to talk about a certain topic or they ask me what I think about a certain topic and I think if it's an important uh, enough topic, then I flip on my phone and talk into it for a while and uh, feel better about it when I'm done. So cool. Thanks for listening. I'll be back for episode 19. This is 18 right now, 31 minutes. Oof. All right. Later.